Hey guys, how's it going? It's Henry here and in today's video what I want to do is I want to show you or guide you quickly on how to start a, a dropshipping store on, on Shopify, how to easily do it. I'm going to guide you through a couple steps that are easy to follow so you can in the next 10 minutes or so know exactly how you can set up your dropshipping store in order to make to start making uh, sales online. So this is something that I've, I've learned through firstly working with, with clients that have dropshipping stores, I was running the ads, and then I've set up my own stores that are now making uh, profits on Shopify. So this is a quick guide I put together that will help any of you out that need to, to know exactly how to do this. So please follow along if, if, you, if you want to, and I'm going to guide you through this now. So just a uh, number of, of, of uh, facts about dropshipping is you don't need to own any stock. You never need to own any products. You just go to a wholesaler. Uh, each time someone orders off your website, uh, you can uh, fulfill that order. So obviously it's a very lean and fairly relatively risk-free business model. I don't think there's anything completely risk-free. But in terms of getting started in your online journey or getting started making money through a store, this is perhaps one of the easiest ways you can do it. Um, you can obviously test uh, countless products to, to find a, a, winning, a winning product without having to actually stock them. So you can keep testing. Um, test 10, 20 different products without actually have owning any to see if one ends up being a winner. So obviously with any other business model, you've got to stock the products. They might not end up selling and then you've got wasted stock in warehouses and so on. In this model, you don't need to do any of that. That's why I'm a big fan of it. And that's why perhaps you are watching this video here. So a quick breakdown on how to actually make money with dropshipping. You import the products, of course, to a website that you set up. And I'll walk you through exactly how to do that there. But you import... You import products to website and then you of course have a price markup better product product descriptions market it better than, than they do on, on the suppliers website promote the store on using Facebook ads and other things that I talk about on this channel and then you can start making making sales so where where do you get started with this drop shipping so there's, there's various ways that you can get started you can find suppliers anywhere around the world you can deal with Etsy suppliers you can do it with Amazon and, and so on but I, I find Shopify and AliExpress is the easiest way to get started with drop shipping. Many people are doing that these days, so basically you should model what what people are getting success with. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to make things complicated for you, especially watching this video. You might be just starting out. So follow the easy to follow method, which is Shopify plus AliExpress. So another thing to also note about starting off of, of your store, um, of course, the US market is like this is in terms of where you're going to be selling traffic. The US market is a huge um, opportunity to scale, huge opportunity to make profits. Uh, so, I, I mean, of course, I would recommend you you advertise to the US or have ideas to market to the US with your store. But also do know in the back of your mind that Europe has also got great potential or other countries w uh, worldwide. You don't need to just target the, the US. And if you're watching this and you're like Italian, Spanish, French, and so on, or you, you know you know some other language in Europe, it might actually be your advantage to advertise or set up a store predominantly in your in, in French, for example, because you aren't competing with a huge, huge market like in, 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 in the States. You've got firstly cheaper advertising costs. Facebook, um, the, the cost per click in France is far cheaper than in America, for example, and also you're competing with less attention because there's less people advertising in France. So that is something to keep in mind if you speak another language. You have maybe got a benefit in setting up your store. These are just little uh, tips I'm, I'm giving you before I guide you through the, the full process. So another thing about after you set up your store, how you're going to get success is basically from finding a really good product, a really hot product, and putting that in front of people who are passionate about that. So of course, to set up your store, you want to find something that people can be passionate about, whether that's in the cat, a cat niche, in the dog niche, you want to make sure you can find one, a good product because you aren't going to sell something that is crap. Find a good product and then put put it in front using Facebook, using Instagram in front of an audience that is, is ready to buy and, and probably already buying some of that product. That That is how you'll find your success. And in order to do this, which anyone should also know, you need to test a lot to, to get uh, success with dropshipping. A lot of the time or in, in some instances, you might end up being successful really quickly with a dropshipping store but go into any dropshipping store with the mindset that you can or you will have to to test multiple times before you find that winning product sometimes 
Test 20 products before you find a winning product. Test 30 times before you find a winning product. But once you find that winning product, you can obviously scale that as much as you want and, and keep profits coming in. So the testing is a, a needed phase, but it's something that um, pays off in the long run. So so don't go into any dropshipping store with, with a, the idea that you are going to just make money quickly. It, it's easy to get into, but you still also have to put in the work. So this is what I, I, I want to make people aware of that are watching this video uh, before I get into it. So... Now, I, I will dive into exactly how you should set up your store. So in step one, this is the first step that you want to do when, when deciding to go into a dropshipping store. So watching this video, you might have decided, you know what, dropshipping can be a good niche uh, or a good business, business model to get into. I want to get into e-commerce. E so question is, how do you get started? Step one, which you can see here, is research and, and pick a niche. This is the stage, is an extremely important stage that a lot of people neglect and they just dive into setting up the store. No, you want to actually do the research. You want to, to make sure that what, whatever you, you're going into actually has a potential to work. So this is what I do before I set up any store. I, I recommend people that I have consultation calls with and stuff to do this as well. So you want, you want to find a niche that is is one larger number it's got a, a big enough people that you can advertise to two is easy to reach uh, on facebook instagram twitter youtube wherever that you're going to do your advertising of course my big favorites are facebook and instagram uh, you want to make sure it's easy to, to uh, you're easy to it's easy enough to reach people on there and I, i'll tell you exactly how to find that out um in, in a second but and then you also want to make sure you obviously have a passionate crowd people who who are already hungry to buy the product of course so you don't want to sell um pens just off the top of my head i don't think there's many people that are necessarily passionate about pens but if you were selling and i'm drinking uh coffee here the people that are passionate about coffee so um it's, it's probably a better idea to sell coffee as opposed to selling pens because people are passionate about coffee if, if that makes sense so these are the things you want to keep in mind initially when when picking your niche and one tool that I use um, to, to start start off my research is Google Trends so you could just go to uh, Google Trends um, go into whichever browser you're on type in Google Trends uh, let's see what comes up so this, this is what this is what you want to do so let's um, I'm in Spain, so obviously this is coming up as Spanish. I didn't actually want that to, but let's let's just see. Um, cat necklaces. Let's just see what comes up here. So, da, 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 da. so on on Google Trends, it's, go, it's going to show you this kind of of graph. You can see if the the trend of this is increasing. Let's check out um, uh, something else. Let's check out drones so uh, we're thinking about setting up a uh, drone store let's see okay the popularity of drones as you can see it, it spiked in 2013 for some reason maybe that's when it, it, it became big in the markets or whatever but you can see there's an increase in in drones people are increasingly interested in talking about drones on Google so that that is perhaps a good um, a good thing to get into by the way I think this might be related to, to Spain uh, because I'm, I'm in Spain currently but you can also tell which countries are, are most popular in terms of, of search um, search traffic or, or whatever so you can choose you can see which countries might be good to target if you if you think about selling drones so that is what I, I do on, on Google Google Trends I, I'd use that to, to start off and see if there's any um, the, the, uh, going into the niche can be profitable. I use that first of all. Then what I do second is I go to Facebook Audience Insight. So uh, again, say we're trying to sell coffee, like I mentioned before. Go into your Facebook Audience Insight and let's let's type in coffee. Uh, let's see what comes up. Coffee magazine. I don't know if they've got coffee magazine. No. Uh, Okay, just just type in coffee. Let's let's just see. This this is not the best thing to target, but we typed in coffee. Then what I do is I go to page likes, and then you can you can see a number of brands that people into coffee might like. Let, let me let me type in something else. 
related to coffee. Um, coffee maker. So let's see what, what, what comes up when I type in coffee maker. So, um, so basically on, on this screen in the audience insights, you can, you can see, uh, what sorts of interests you might be able to target if you're going to run a coffee shop, for example, on Facebook. So again, I'm not choosing the best interest here. You, you want to do this better, but basically use the Facebook audience insights to, to dive deeper into your, your research. And then, um, so that's, that is what I do. As you can see in this example, I've got on screen here, I've typed in dogs, uh, go to page like, so I can see a couple pages that might be good to target if I want to, to, I'm selling dog products so like I have dogs might be good dog bless you I love my people oh my god I love dogs all these I was able to find on the audience inside so I know if I was to go into this niche that yes there are possible pages that I could target so that is awesome then I can move on to the next next stage so the next stage is you actually want to find what are, are really good selling products in the niche so for that you want to go to a suppliers website the best one that that um, I know is, is Aliexpress so or the, the best one that I, I think is good to, to uh, run is on AliExpress. So let's let's say uh, dog color. So you can go to AliExpress, and let's say we you think about selling uh, a, a dog dog color. You you uh, yeah you, you go over to AliExpress. As you can see here, um, we've got some dog colors here. What you want to do is, or what I do is, organize them in in uh, in terms of how many orders they've got so you can see these are pretty pretty popular or high selling um, LED lights so if we were going to be running a store selling this some of these might be good ones to stock on our site so this is just all collecting data on, on what you can eventually stock on, on your site you can see this has got good rating from the seller which you want to uh, to, to make sure uh, you want to make sure it's also got e-packet uh, shipping later on I'll, I'll show you exactly how to do that but uh, yeah you can go through these to get an idea of the prices get an idea of what kind of sellers what kind of uh, idea of what kind of products they've got on, on Aliexpress you can even go into them uh, let's let's see here so go into them you can read the feedback from uh, customers let's see the feedback so Read the feedback. See, it's got this one has got good ratings. Check out pictures if if you wish. Uh, good reviews to make sure you actually will stock good products. So you can do that for whatever you can search cat pillows. Let's see, Wh whichever niche you want to go into, you can do this on on AliExpress. Again, go here, um, sort sort an order of how many orders that they've got, and then do the same thing that I I mentioned here and find really high selling products on Aliexpress to give you an idea of what you could stock um, for that niche and then so that is all good we're going through each stage now to do our research making sure once we set up our store it's going to be in a, a well chosen niche and then that is making the, the work far easier for you going ahead you don't want to just jump into creating a store with no prior research so uh, the, the fourth thing you want to do is check on Instagram because uh, a big strategy I like to use, and this gets my store a lot of, of traffic, is on Instagram. So you want to go to Instagram here, and like say say you are trying to search for cat influencer. What you want to do is go to the search bar here. As you can see, this already might be a good influencer that you can reach out to. But yeah, type type in cats, dogs, whatever you're trying to target into the search bar, and then. You see on the top post here, you've got a number of, of accounts with pretty good engagement and so on. So, for example, this might, might be another possible influence. So let's click on, on the profile. So, this is actually a store, so perhaps they aren't looking to be, be contacted for, for reaching out. But this, perhaps cats of Instagram, 7.9 million followers. Uh, perhaps you could reach out to this account here and they might be interested in shouting shouting you out of being an influencer for your brand so this is all well and good we can see this niche has 
influencer so we're, we're now we're now in the fourth stage and then what you want to do after that is after you've gone to, to Instagram checked out the influencers there another thing you can do is go to the Amazon uh, watch count this is another place that you can check out the hot, hottest selling items again all this that you're doing now is is might be tedious but it's going to enable you to actually set up a, a, a store that's going to be or have the, the best possible chance of succeeding early on so let's um, go to watch count and type something for cats so if you're thinking about selling to cats right now these are the most popular items on, on, on eBay at, at the moment so you might take a look at uh, engraved tags this might be a, a good good thing to, to sell let's let's search something else let's see uh, pets so uh, no I want eBay USA so so let's 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 um, again well what count this shows the most popular eBay items so it might give you an idea of, of what kind of product you could look out for so as you can tell here a personalized collar it's got 226 people watching this a uh, engraved poor dog tag puppy whatever that is um, all, all these things these give you ideas of, of what you can stock on on your site because all these are popular high selling items which is is awesome for your site so um, yeah and then uh, so, so this this is all of the, the research stage of course you want to spend a bit more time than I'm spending on these examples here to actually do the research but but this is is the, the actual steps you want to take and then another thing you can do once you've got an idea of the kind of niche you want to go into you've gone through this previous five steps you've seen the cat niche might be good to go into because you've got products you can stock products that are good quality um, you've got uh, an idea of, of what what kind of, of general idea you're going or general um, frame you're going to take with this website what you can then do is spy on other sites in, in the niche to see what the competitors are doing so for this what I do as I've outlined here you just go to Google type in the niche that you, you decided to go into plus my Shopify and then you will find some some sites that are uh, related to the niche so let's try that here so we go to cats my Shopify uh, yeah so and then we wait for it to load as you can tell you we've seen a couple of sites here I'm just gonna open a couple so you can uh, check them out in this video let's let's see what comes up um, yeah so as you can see this is a site a, a size probably another drop shipping site you can see get an idea of the kind of stuff that they're doing you can maybe read an about page if they've, they've got one to see what the competitors in your niche are doing i think this is not the greatest site so you can see uh she's talking about here's a list about me people don't really want to know that so there's stuff you can improve on the site but you can see she's got payment icons uh social media links privacy policy terms of service so you, you see the good thing that people in the niche are doing and note, note that in your mind for when you are set up your store. I don't know what's up, up with this store but uh, basically you can replicate that and search for competitors in the niche using that method and uh, yeah that, that will help you to get an idea of what you need to have on your site when you finally set up so once you've done all these six steps a final note is another site that I, you can sometimes use to find uh, good products especially if you're running a general store is uh, this site here let me try and open it in a, in a new tab shut up and take my money it's quite a funny site, but they've just got a lot of good gadgets that are uh, kind of quirky. You can perhaps look look for them later on on, on AliExpress and so on, and then uh, they could end up being good sellers. So that that's just an idea for you to to check out when when um when thinking about setting up your your site. So after you've done all that research stage, this might take uh, taking you a number of hours or even a couple of days or whatever to actually do proper research dive into the the niche that you're trying to to go into then what you want to do is um, set up your store so this is the, the the second stage and where I recommend you set up your store there's various platforms there's WooCommerce there's uh, WordPress various platforms that you can set up an e-commerce store my favorite is Shopify because it's very robust it's a 
really good e-com uh, platform. Many people are using it, so you can you know that the the top dogs, people who are doing a lot of money on using e-commerce are using Shopify so there's no need for you to try and complicate things and go with something else I would recommend use Shopify it's very easy to set up and one one note about setting up a store before you dive into it is you might want to set up a general store first because until you find a winning uh, product uh, then you can you can niche down as you go along because sometimes what you don't want to happen is set up a niche store or a store that is very very um, targeted and then you find actually you can't you, you, the products don't sell or this niche isn't good then you have to set up a completely different store but from the start if you set up a general store you can test a number of products you can test 60 products until you find a winner and then when, once you find certain products that are selling from your general store you can then take those products and set up a, a niche store later on so this is just an idea that you can uh, do it's up to you what you choose to, to go with but uh, it's an idea for setting up your first store. So then, what you want to do from that is, of course, the first the first stage to to set up the store is picking a domain name. So um, what you want to do is go to sites like uh, Name Mesh or Lean Domain Search. If you don't already have a, a name in mind, these are just places that can can help you um, in terms of setting up your store. So okay, this is is not what I'm looking for. So let's go to um, one sec, we'll wait for this to load. So, let's say we're thinking about selling up a cat store. So, cat necklace, let, let, uh, cat lover. Let's see what comes up. So, this is a, a site that could perhaps help you um, find, find good uh, websites. So, Let's see, it's going to show us possible possible websites names that you can choose. So uh, this is uh, pretty good. You can also use lean domain search. These are two two websites that you can use to find good good domain names for your website. If of course you want creative like like some people are in terms of coming up with a uh, good domain name. So this is two two sites that you can use. It's taking a bit of time, but basically you can use those uh, use those sites like catlover.org, catlover.site, catloverly.com is free, catlovery, catloverize, whatever these are. It comes up with catloverable, good uh, names that you could possibly use. Just gives you ideas of free websites that are, that are available. And then you can do the same, as I said, on on lead domain search, so you can see cat lover blog, cat lover web, pro cat lover. These are all possible names that come up uh, that you could possibly choose. And then, once you've picked your name, these again, these tools that I've mentioned here, name mesh, lean domain search, name find, they help you pick a domain. Then you can register your domain. And I normally go with with Namecheap, so you can choose between GoDaddy or whatever you want to go with, but I choose name Namecheap to register my domains. Very easy to do. Then what you want to do after that is sign up for a free trial on Shopify. They, they give you a free 14-day trial period. To keep this video short, I'm not going to, to go through all that, but you can set up a, a thing quickly at mail.com, whatever, password, whatever you want to go with, and then cat lover blog. Whatever you want to go with, you, you choose that here and, and then you create your store. And in future videos, I will guide you through the, the precise setting up the store part, but I'll just briefly go through here so you, you get an idea of what you need to do. So you set up the store, go click on create your store, and it will it will do that for you. And then you have a 14 day trial period. You'll get the Shopify dashboard. Uh, one second, what am I doing here? You will get the, the Shopify dashboard that comes up. Uh, and then it, it will it will look similar to this. So as you can see this screen in front of me here You've got your general uh, store details that you want to enter your store name Put your account email a support email if you have one and just put your details there Then you want to go through each of these icons here to set set everything up payments You want to make sure it depends on, on which which country you're in in terms of what payment gateways are available You might set up PayPal. you might set up stripe but you want to do that all here and then set up your, your shipping rates 
uh, taxes and, and so on, depending on where where you live. Uh, and again, I'll cover all this in, in a future video. This is just a, a quick rundown of, of what you want to do. Uh, in terms of of on the checkout page, I believe it's on the checkout page. Yeah, these are a number of things that you want to make sure uh, you do. Though you want to make sure you use a shipping address as a billing uh, address by default. So you, you, this doesn't complicate things for people when they're checking out. So you want to make sure this icon is checked here. And then in terms of, of this one here, you want to make sure by default the customer agrees to receive promotion email. So either either this one or disable and hide this field. But I believe to disable it, it depends on, on which, which country you're in. And then after an order has pay, been paid, you want to make sure this is on set to do not automatically fulfill any of the order's line items. Because if you are dropshipping, you're going to have to fulfill those items yourself. So make sure or use use a program like I'll, I'll talk about later to fulfill the item. So make sure this is is checked. You don't want to automatically fulfill any order. So these are just a couple of settings that you want to to do. Also, in order to, to make your store far more trustworthy, you want to generate a sample refund policy, sample privacy uh, policy, and terms of service on the checkout page. Just click on generate sample refund policy, etc. Here and and uh, Shopify will populate a sample for you that you can edit at any time but at least there's something there it helps you say say trustworthy and then after you've done all these settings what you want to do is actually set up the theme and start developing your store so initially you want to go with a free theme because you don't need to, to complicate stuff uh, you don't need to add any extra costs necessarily and you can get sales with a, a free theme so just pick any of the, the free themes. I might suggest a couple later in the comments. But uh, yeah, pick pick a, a free theme. When I have a, a walkthrough video on actual setting up the store, I, I will choose some. I'll show you some of my favorite themes for you to go with. But um, yeah, so pick pick a theme for your store, and then what you want to do is then design a, a logo for the store because it's not necessary, of course. But you want to make make your site look a bit more professional. So these are a couple of places that you can get logos. You can try on Fiverr, or you can go to Upwork. I might show you um, on Upwork how I, I would do that. Sign up on Upwork. Um, uh, go to post a job, part time or short time time work. You want to go to uh, short time work um, on on Upwork. So okay, so. On, on Upwork, this this is how you would do it. perhaps design and creative logo design and branding logo for Shopify site. Hi there, I need a logo for my Shopify site for cats. Send your past work regards whatever it is I just I'm just writing this off the top of my head but you want to describe describe the work you want done set set your budget how, how much you want to pay and, and so on and then hire some somebody on Upwork it's again fairly easy to do you'll get people that send in their portfolio and so on and they interview them and then you you can get uh, very easily someone to design a logo for your store so I, I would do that just to give a bit more professionalism to your store you can try Fiverr if you want to some people have had success with that uh, if you want to do it quickly yourself what I do with some stores I've set up is just go to Canva for free let's go to um, Canva uh, logo because Canva lets you set up uh, logos as, as well uh, so yeah, you can can just go to Canva. Let's see, it's taking a bit of time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, whilst whilst that is waiting to load, apart from Canva, you can also use Icon Finder, which uh, is is this here. You can find. A nice icon for your for your website. Type in cats or whatever. Um, you can find yeah some some pretty good icons. 
you can maybe just copy one of these, add it to your site, and it just gives it an added element of, of professionalism. Not the greatest, but you can just buy them for a dollar, uh, and then you've got some kind of logo that you can go with. Or as I said, um, use use Canva. Like let's let's see this. Just this is just an example. These are logo they logos they've already populated. You can edit this for your 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 cat page, and then you can get some pretty good logos. As is here, I, I don't think some of them are, are bad at all. So especially if you want to quickly get your site up and running, you can use some of those examples to get yourself a, a logo. And then, of course, add those to the site. And then the next thing you want to do after designing a logo is you want to add extra pages to the website because obviously things like an about page, contact page, or sizing page just add an, an extra element of trust to the website, and it just looks really good because actually the about page is one of the most extremely important pages on the website because after your home page most people will go to your uh, about page to get an idea of of what kind of store you are and so on and so forth so you must have an about page on your website uh, you might not when you're browsing websites as well you always go to the about page so uh, you definitely a, a good about page increases the trust of your website and your conversion so work on that um, it's an, a very important page this is an, this is a, an example of a fairly good about about us page on buckmason.com. I don't know where I, f I found that, but you just see an, an, a nice little about page talking about what, who the brand is, what they stand for, and it just this increases conversion. People know that they they are. It's not just a random website because who, like who who knows what you're buying from when you you purchase online. So you want to actually relate to the the brand that you're buying from. It just makes makes it seem a bit more trustworthy. So you definitely want to work on your about page. So. Again, in, when, when I do a walkthrough video guiding you precisely through the, st the steps in, in, a, in setting up the Shopify sites, I will show you exactly how to set up the about page properly, but this is a, a quick uh, walkthrough. Maybe you can figure it out for yourself, but you want to make sure you've got the about page. And then, what you, need to, what, what, what you just then need to do is link your domain that you bought in, in previous steps, the, the domain that you bought on Namecheap or whatever, and, and then remove the password on your store because uh, when, when you start off a Shopify store, you have got a password on the page. Remove the password and then the site is live and, and good to go. You can start getting sales from, from day one once you've got to this stage. So, um, yeah, and, and then, of course, if you haven't manually put, put the products on your website, Perhaps you haven't because I haven't guided you through those steps here. The next thing you want to do is go to AliExpress, which is a supplier's website, and then you want to start sourcing the products that you're going to stock on the website. So, as I said, you can either manually add the items to your store or use an app like Oberlo, which is my go-to now in terms of stocking products. It's very easy to use, makes things very simple, and Oberlo basically just uh, easily, t easily. Firstly, it takes the, the stock from directly from AliExpress and populates it on your website automatically. It keeps track of how much items are in stock. So what once um, once the items on AliExpress are out of stock, it, it notifies on your site so people don't place orders and there's no stock. And also it allows you to fulfill orders far, far easier. So a burlo is, is definitely I think it's it's paid like five euros a month or something very um, very cheap really for, for what it does uh, and I would recommend you use Oberlo so this is, is, is an idea of, of what Oberlo is let's say we are stocking um, a dog collar I've used this in previous examples but let's say we're stock, stocking a, a dog collar so firstly you want to install Oberlo from your Shopify dashboard and then go to the Oberlo website like you see here um, and then search for whatever items you want to stock on your site say a dog collar, um, as as I mentioned before, or any any item at all. This is just for for the example. But uh, as you can see, it, it is um, coming up. Yeah, it's, it's taking a bit of time. But it's, it's it's coming up eventually. And then, okay, I'm not sure that this is doing the dog collar or this either. But anyway, the rest here are, um, as you can tell, dog collars. You can see the, the price, you can see, uh, what, what also, what, what I should say, you want to make sure, firstly, you, you show where they're sh they shipping to, so it depends if you want to uh, ship to the States, if you want to ship to wherever it is your store is located, you can pull that up here, and then uh, what you want to make sure actually is they, they, uh, the product or good reviews here, check this out, and make sure it's um, on uh, .epackage. 
because this cuts down the, the shipping times. This is, is it enables you to have track shipping on, on your on your products, which is fairly important on, on drop shipping. You want to keep your your um, shipping times as um, fast as possible because already that's the disadvantage of 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 uh, drop shipping. You don't want to make it 45 days or whatever that it normally is. You want to cut it down and you want to be able to to track the orders because that. Uh, will reduce chargebacks that will keep customers happy because you can let them know where the order is and what is going with the order so you want to make sure e-packet is, is on on the on the products you, you stock generally so all, all these might be good um, things really again maybe check out the, the images on 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 the the items or opening them up in Aliexpress you can do that here and, and check them out for, for yourself uh, just to keep this okay, so you can check check it out on AliExpress itself, read reviews and so on. Make sure it's actually a, a quality item, and then uh, once you've done that, you can click on here. I don't want to do this now, but click on here to add the product to the import list, meaning uh, a list of items that you are thinking about uh, putting onto your site. Add them to the import list. They will all go um, here on the import list here. I, I, do, I don't want to open it up or you might see other stuff that I'm thinking about import which isn't an issue really but um, it goes to the import list here and then what you can do from there is which is very important actually change the the um, choose firstly choose the images that you want because sometimes Aliexpress have terrible images uh, on there like for example in this here it's got a, a watermark on there you don't want that on your site so make sure when, once it's in your import list, you pick the best pictures, perhaps something like this is, is good. Choose the best pictures for your site and update the descriptions. Very important because Aliexpress have, um, in, in the nicest possible way, crap descriptions. So you definitely want to, to uh, change the descriptions they have on there. Make it, add some good copy, uh, hire a copywriter, spend some time really, really working on those descriptions because that will increase your sales. Uh, and then once you've done done on the import list, you can directly send it over to my products. And once it's on the my product list, it directly goes to your website and it's available for sale on your on your website straight away. So that is what Oberlo does. And then as well, when when you you start um, you start actually getting sales to your website, you can fulfill the orders directly from Oberlo. You can pay uh, Ali from AliExpress directly from Oberlo, and it's a really good app. I walk. Uh, you through that stage of Oberlo in, in future videos, but instead of your site and, and stocking products, this is what you need to, to know um, from from Oberlo. So, uh, as, as I said, uh, make sure when when you're getting product from Oberlo or AliExpress or whatever, they got good reviews, good seller ratings, good images, and and e-packet uh, shipping. So, actually, when picking your products, do do the research or dive deep into the products to make sure the actual quality they have fairly good shipping times, a reputable seller and, and so on because you don't want to run into issues later when you're selling a product that actually isn't good and so on. They're just going to hurt you in, in the long run. So make sure that is taken care of when, when you're finding your products. Um, you can see in these images here, I've, I've shown you exactly how to, to add to import list and, and so on. It's e-packet shipping, ships out within five business days, it's from a reputable seller and, and so on. So at this stage now, you should have your, you've done your research, you've got your Shopify site set up, you've got products on your, on your website uh, from Mobello. Uh, you're almost good to go, but I will say there's a number of useful other apps that uh, might just help out your, your store, increase your initial conversions, because of course you don't want to also get bogged down with too many details, just get your store up as, as quickly as possible with with a number of key elements and you're good to go and then as as you you start driving traffic you can tweak as you go along but don't spend too much time uh, on, on anything I'm, I'm saying in this video get through all these steps as quickly as possible and actually set up your store and then you can you can start tweaking it really when when you're getting traffic to it but this this is just some other apps that I find useful that will definitely help you out initially to get those initial sales uh, and get your store up and running so this is the first, uh, one of the first ones I install is McAfee. I don't know how to pronounce that, but McAfee Secure. It's basically just a trust badge that makes the site seem more trustworthy, which of course you want. You want your site to, to be as, as trustworthy as possible or people aren't going to buy for it. I, I'm definitely not even going to buy a product for, for three euros or three dollars online, for, even if it's the cheapest product, if it's not from a site that I trust because what are they going to steal my credit card details? What are they going to do? So I've got to make sure I trust the website and badges like this are really, really important to, to increase trust because obviously it doesn't even mean anything really because anyone can install this on the website 
but it just seems I'm, I'm familiar with this um, symbol other people are familiar with this symbol when you see it you feel this website is a bit more trustworthy whether it is or not that's another question but you definitely want to, to uh, install that and what, what it's going to do is put a banner on, on the bottom of your pages and so on that just make people feel more safe with, with your, your product so you definitely want to have that and then you want to have the the free shipping or information bar Again, these all these apps I'm, I'm going to mention here are necessary. Once you've got the other other um, steps that I set up, these are necessary, but they help. So uh, you might want to have a free shipping bar, which which adds a banner to the top of your page and draws attention to either sale or if you've got free shipping, which actually I recommend everyone has free shipping because it's a big conversion killer when people people are checking out on your website and they see actually I've got to pay for for shipping. It's, it's a weird way that people sometimes work is a weird, weird, weird way that people visiting your site work they might add um, products to you to the, the basket eventually worth sixty dollars but when they see a three extra three dollar shipping they're like no I don't want to pay shipping so as much as possible as much as it makes sense for you try and add free shipping to your site and then with this bar you can highlight the fact that it's free shipping so let's take a look at this um, brand which is a fairly uh, a brand that's doing fairly well. They are uh, an e-commerce brand uh, at, the, at the minute. You can see they've got a, a free uh, shipping bar on top of their website. So it's, it's as soon as you go to the website, you can tell, oh, this, these people have got uh, free worldwide shipping. It's a good incentive for me to order from them. I don't need to pay for shipping, which I hate. So that might be a good idea for you to get on your site. And then, uh, back, back to the, the concept of, of abandoning emails, uh, abandoned carts. Uh, what you want to do is is uh, what you want to do is, is get this this um, app, which which I really like. It's called Convergio. Uh, on, on this, you can send uh, emails to people who have abandoned carts because most people actually that add items to the cart on your website. Just a heads up, they're going to abandon the cart because that's just how people people shop. So you've got to get make sure you've got on your website abandoned cart emails in place. And then you can send send emails to people who haven't bought, follow them up, and get them to to make sales later. Again, these all these things I'm mentioning might not be things that you have to focus on initially. Just focus on getting that website up, getting traffic to it, and then seeing things that you need to improve. But all these things I'm mentioning here definitely help uh, eventually. So conversion is is a good one. And, and yeah, I, so back back on that point, it's, it, it's better probably to get these things set up uh, as quickly as possible at the beginning so things are smoother uh, from from there but it depends how you want to do to, to do it but uh, conversion is is good as you can see it's it, this is a an example of the kind of email it sends out with a, a receipt uh, you want to be building that relationship with your customer so don't just think of people as as a a, a, a transaction once people have bought from your site Use the, your email marketing through apps like Conversion to build that relationship and let them buy from you more in the future. So another email marketing um, app that is good, you don't need to use both of them, but either choose between Clavio and, and Conversio, and, and then you can use that as well. Personally, I don't have much experience with Clavio, but apparently it's a very, very good uh, app as well, so you might want to check that out. Um, Another thing I use sometimes on, on sites is Privy. It's a good way to collect emails from from uh, visitors for, from the website. And, and what you want to keep in mind with any store you have is you want to be building up an email list eventually. Whether or not, actually from the start you want to be building up an, an email list. So Privy helps you you do that. What what it does is when someone um, has some exit intent or is about to exit your website, it pops up with like. As you can see here, sign up for 10% on your first order. And people, it gives the people incentives at first, stay on the website, and then you get the emails as well to remarket to them later. So it's a privy allows you to do that. It's a good strategy. And then this is one of my favorites, Horrify, because scarcity is a huge factor in letting people buy. It definitely will increase your conversions if you get um, Horrify on your website. It's $6.99 per month, which is not a lot. You get that money back probably in instantly. Um, uh, as you as you can tell, this is is horrify on on one of my the websites I have. It says hurry offer ends in, um, and it says the number of, of hours or, or, or days or whatever. It says the number in, in stock. This is one on one of my websites, but uh, it just it just makes people more likely to buy. When you go on a website and you see this product, and it's, it's there forever, you might not have the incentive to buy. But when you see 
wow, this product is, is only there, only available at this price for the next uh, three hours. Something in you is like, okay, I've got to buy that product. And that's how other people um, act as well when, when they're going to visit your website. So you want to have some form of scarcity, and Hi-Fi is very good with that. And then uh, you want to also have some app like Aftership. Uh, that allows you to track your orders and keep keep customers happy. If you're using e-package shipping, like I'm, I mentioned before, you can reduce the, char uh, the, the chances of chargebacks and disputes from any customers by uh, keeping them updated with, with their, their shipping and after ship allow you to, to do that. So um, also, and, and one last point that I want to mention in terms of what could help on your site is a, a banner with, with with safety images or payment images to your product pages and I actually got the dev developer to do that for me for I couldn't figure out how to do it uh, I tried but uh, I got a developer to do it for me for just twenty dollars and it took like five minutes and let me show you an example it's, it's these payment icons which increase trust on the, on the website some themes might have it um, but uh, my the theme I was using on that website didn't so I just got a developer to do that for me so you can do the same and then the last step, pretty much, in getting your, your, your site um, up there, getting your site, getting sales and, and making money is traffic. And so probably the most important uh, element, because without traffic, your website is not going to get sales. The traffic part is something I focus a lot on this channel, as you know. My favorite traffic source in the minute is Facebook ads, followed by Instagram, uh, whether that is organic, uh, whether that's from influencers. Uh, that those are my two favorite traffic sources and I talk a lot about those on this channel I will make future videos after this to to guide you through the the quick start guide to Facebook Facebook advertising on e-commerce quick start guide to Instagram whether it's organic or influencers on this channel so you can you can watch those videos and soak in as much information as possible to learn those traffic sources but of course depending on your niche blogs or affiliates might also be good for you SEO might be a good strategy for you YouTube or Twitter influencers might be be good for for you as well so don't don't stay close minded to just Facebook or Instagram there's various things that can get you traffic as I said I will uh, in future videos on the, on this channel have full breakdowns of, of each of these traffic sources for you to understand uh, at least in, 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 in brief and for you to start getting traffic to your sites and try start getting sales so I hope this video helped I hope you managed to maybe set up a, a store quickly after watching this video. If you've got any questions related to what I covered in this video, feel free to ask in the comments. I respond to basically every comment on on, on, on my on this channel, so feel free to ask. Don't be shy at all, and subscribe if you like this kind of content. I've got more guys on this channel, and I will be getting much more uh, good content for you coming on this channel to get you sales, get you where you want to be with your online marketing. So once again, hope this video helped, and see you on the next video.